Hello again now to unpack the basic education laws. I'm in Bill Feather. I'm joined by Matakanya Matakanya from the National Association of School Governing Bodies. This bill is uh, making now compulsory for parents to enroll their children for grade R as the year when they should start uh, schooling. Otherwise, the parents will be formally penalized. That's just one of the, of the provisions of this bill. Tata Matakanya, good afternoon. Welcome uh, to today. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Tata Matakanya. Your, your viewers. Yes. Tell me, yeah, tell me, this bill is now, uh, it's been approved in Parliament yesterday. As far as national school governing bodies go, how does it affect you? Do you welcome its new provisions? We do welcome uh, the new provision, <clears throat> uh, uh, and uh, also, well, there are some areas that we differ with the bill. However, uh, we can live with it, uh, and it has shown that uh, um, uh, is an in attempt to improve uh, the previously built schools uh, for for producing labor and uh, we feel that this bill will go far by changing that landscape of of this school only uh, intended to produce people who talk english and be able to read the bible so i think now our people are being through the bill they will be given proper skills so that uh, we know that uh, with time then we would have skillful uh, South Africans. Uh, we will not refer them anymore as uh, unskillful uh, South Africans. And we see this bill because, as you have mentioned, look, uh, this bill has already introduced the, the great R, that the great R must be compulsory in schools. Uh, and it shows that now we are going to formalize these children at that age and develop their cognitive development at that age so that uh, we know by the time they get to matric, uh, they are already developed mm. because uh, it must be tantamount to developing also the, the staff, the teachers who will be teaching these children must be properly qualified so that okay. now they teach them from that level up to that the, the, the so, level. So we are, we are happy. As much as we said, there are areas that we are not happy, although okay. we also can live with it. The question of legal. Yeah, no, before we talk about the areas you're not happy with, I just want to bring another provision of the bill and get your, your reaction to it, Matakanya. In terms uh, of the language policy, the bill is saying that a school governing body will now be uh, uh, required to submit a language policy that reflects the broader community in which the school is located. Your reaction to the language policy uh, provision? We are happy with that. As I earlier on said, that uh, language in this country has been used to bar the South African to go to some schools. Uh, 1994, uh, the ushering of democracy in this country, we really forgot about the separate development. You know, you remember the time of the Bantu stands. Uh, people were divided according to the languages. So the advent of democracy in 1994 stopped that, that there's no more separate development in the country. We are one nation. Therefore, uh, we must recognize uh, all the languages equally. And uh, the Constitution is indicating that. But you see, in this case, where the bill is trying to break away uh, those communities that still feel uh, mm -hmm. they are living in the prior 1994. And we are saying, no, uh, this is not 1994. Uh, we have passed that stage of a language being used. And you know that uh, the language is a very sensitive uh, area in this country. 1976, if you remember, and the deep one is that uh, this country was nearly banned, uh, but it banned, uh, it banned because of language. And people were just emphasizing one language to say, we, we have to know one language. And 
these people were learning from the colonial masters because also the colonial masters built the schools and uh, these schools that produce labor only for English and how to read the Bible. So we are saying uh, that time has passed. Okay. So we are welcoming this, 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 we are welcoming the, the change of the, the tempering of the language with the, the, the HOD must show to make sure that uh, the language is, and Department of Education has also a policy that it talks about the okay. gradual introduction of African languages in schools, but it does not take okay. off that, that policy. Okay, and now, what are you unhappy about? What are the provisions you as the governing bodies are not happy with? Well, uh, as I have indicated is that uh, we, we, we really not happy about the, the selling of liquor in schools. Uh, when you look at the bill, then it says uh, they don't allow liquor in schools. They don't allow anybody bringing in liquor in schools. However, if schools want to bring liquor, then they must apply to the HOT. And we are saying, I don't know what message are we sending uh, there. Uh, and if HOC say, yes, uh, go and sell liquor in that school, uh, the HOD gives them, they, they, they go ahead, they sell the liquor. So I don't know what message are we giving to the young people in South Africa uh, to turn mm. schools into... Uh, taverns to turn schools into shebins. So we thought uh, this thing will just be a no, no, no go area and no liquor will ever enter school. But they are saying, uh, well, uh, the, then the HOD, but it depends on the HOD. If the HOD is is, is progressive, then uh, I don't think it will, it will grant permission for liquor to be sold in schools. So you would have preferred for the bill to say no liquor at schools under any conditions, full stop? That's, that's, that's exactly what, what we are saying. Yeah. That's exactly what we are saying. We will be very much happy because we'll be sending a very clear message to our young South Africans to say liquor. I mean, you have seen that the Mirani that uh, during the, the lockdown, during the, the, the COVID, uh, liquor in this country was strictly regulated and things were in order. Things were really orderly. I mean, a lot of things that, but now if you are saying you are going to sell liquor into school, then apply to the HOD. If that HOD has got a mm -hmm. farm of wine, then just say, no, go and sell the liquor in, in, in the school. I mean, we, we, we really have, we are not happy, but well, we just hope that we'll pin our hopes on the progressive HODs that will say, no, these are our children. We know they refuse anything. Okay, thank you very much for your time and your reaction. Uh, the chairperson of the National Association of School Governing Board is reacting there to the new basic education laws amendment bill, welcoming it overall, especially its provision that children now must be registered for schooling from grade R. If you're a parent and you have a child who's due for grade R and you don't take them to school, you don't enroll them to school, you will be formally penalized. They welcome that, but not happy that there is some little gap there around the sale or presence of liquor on school premises.